Oh, this poor camera. <laughs> Lighting situation it kind of has to deal with. So, <clears throat> this was requested by someone when I gave them the option. The horrors of strip clubs. The horrors of strip clubs. <laughs> now, I've been to a few over the years, but I've never really seen the attraction to them. Like, overpriced beers, paying to get an erection in a public place where you can't do anything. I mean, there are other issues there, obviously exploitation of women and stuff, but that's not what I'm going there. I'm going in as a consumer. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you about my experiences with strip clubs. <laughs> so <clears throat> I never had the guts to go to one when I was like younger. And I think the first one I went to, I was 22. Now, my first experience with a strip club beforehand had been a negative one. There used to be a club I'd go to on a Friday night where they'd play Mel and Goth music. And it basically got halved in size because there was a strip club next door. And when you'd come out at night, you finish. You know, it's two in the morning, you're wanky, you want to get home. And like strip clubs had a, you know, couldn't wear trainers, had to be in suits, something like that. You had all these coked up twats outside. So never, never was interested in the clientele or anything, whatever. So there was this one called Heaven Sent, and it was, was it Heaven Sent? Yeah, and it was upstairs of the Fuzzy Duck in Portsmouth. The Fuzzy Duck was the grimmest, <laughs> horrible kind of club you could go to. It's the one where if you were too drunk or too drugged up to go anywhere else, to be let in anywhere else, they'd let you in. And you'd go upstairs. <laughs> it was just a disaster. Right? Me and my friend went in because we'd never been. We were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to go get lap dances and stuff. And we went in. And we sat upstairs. And lovely, you know, came over. She goes, oh, where are you sitting? She said like that. And then we went up to the bar. And you had the bar here. And then along here, because it was really quiet, you had like this row of women just, just standing there. <laughs> and it was like a meat market. There was no... Like active show or anything to other people, it was just there were women. I was like, uh, well, immediately uncomfortable. Then the beer prices, <laughs> the girl behind the bar serving me was someone I'd gone to school with. <laughs> so that immediately made me go, Oh, uh, yeah, you're so and so. Yeah, <laughs> it was just immediately, immediately a bad idea. <laughs> and we. I was like, okay, so we got it, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna get a lap dance, I'm gonna get a lap dance. And like, you know, we had these women come up, we'll chat to them, and they walked off and stuff. And my friend was determined not to get one, and because he said, I've got no money, they stopped coming over. And I saw this very petite little blonde, and I thought, I'm gonna ask her to dance with me. <laughs> That's we were sat down. I saw her and another one dragging these two guys to like the dance room. <laughs> And I immediately, I saw the blokes, and I went, yeah, we're done. We'll, we'll go drink somewhere else. <laughs> it's because the girl, you know, was being dragged. You know, she had his hand, she was leaning behind. And he was there, this... And I realised that I wasn't that big at the time. I had hair, no beard. This really fat guy in a tracksuit bond. <laughs> kind of like his tongue hanging out, looking at his friend like, we're not going to get some. So she was like... All sexy. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> and that's when I went, put the drink down. I'm gonna finish up, mate. We're done. You're not gonna get dance, no. No, I'm fucking not. <laughs> so, and it was, oh uh, yeah. So um, it was a. The next one's a couple of years later, and I'm in um, Edinburgh, Edinburgh, Edinburgh with some friends for a wedding. <clears throat> and there were four of us, and I was sharing a room with a friend, I'm not gonna name him. It's a funny story, I don't wanna name him. If he hears this and goes, oh yeah, feel free to message me, mate, you got my number. <laughs> he, um, we were, this is another couple, and what they would do, they would go to bed really early. Cause they were newly together, you know. <laughs> <clears throat> so, 
we'd go to this, we'd go out every night, me and him just drinking. We found this bar called the the Rat Bar, and it, the Rat Pack Bar, and it was based on um, like um, what the, the Rat Pack, you know. I can't think what his name. Fly me to the moon, and you know all that kind of guys. And um, they'd have the movies on and had that music playing, and it was reasonably priced. It was quite nearby, but my friend had never been to a strip club. I had no interest in going to one, but there was one opposite of the road. And he goes, oh, let's go in, okay. So it's 2012. <laughs> and at the time, the, it wasn't, you couldn't just cross the road. They were putting in like some tram system. So we had to go all the way around. And the entire time I'm like, are you sure you want to do this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sure? Yeah, okay. So we went in. And it cost us like a tenner to get in. Okay. <clears throat> and we walked up. <laughs> and then, sorry. <clears throat> It was like a tenner to get, we walked up. And then when we we got into there, and I was up and I was like, uh, just a bottle of Budweiser. So he took it out with this multi-pack case, which, you know, would have cost £12 for 12 at the time, and charged me a fiver for it. And I went, lukewarm <laughs> multi-pack beer for a fiver. Okay. So I went and sat down. And again, there was no show on. It wasn't that busy. So when I say there's no show on, you know, when you always see strip clubs in the um, the movies, it's always, you know, there's a stage, people sat around the stage, you've got girls going around asking for lap dancers, then you've got someone on the pole, you know, you coming up is Melissa, you know, none of that, that wasn't it, it wasn't that busy, so we just sat there, and uh, these girls are coming up to us, <laughs> and uh, I was shouting to my mate, and it's because, because he was single, I had obviously was still with my current missus, and, you know, so I didn't have that. I didn't want the dance. I was no interested in being, kind of being there. <clears throat> and, um, like, he, he was single. So I was like, you know, you, do you have a type who you're going to kind of choose? And the first bird that came up to him, he negotiated. He spoke quickly. He disappeared. And I went, all right, have fun. So I'm, uh, they're, they're drinking. And all of a sudden, this very large pair of fake boobs straight on my arm and I was like what? <laughs> it's like this is quite pleasant she started chatting and you know where you're from and stuff like that and then it came down and she was like oh so uh can I you know we'd been chatting for a couple of minutes she was like do you want to dance and I've gone I've got no money love <laughs> I've never seen a pair of tits disappear so fast <laughs> and then it must have got round because whilst we've been sat down other girls have been coming up and you know kind of winking at us and stuff like that trying to get our attention I got ignored for the next 10 minutes now I don't know how long a lap dance lasts but I'm fairly sure it's not 10 minutes so he had been gone a little while <clears throat> I just got ignored paid for another overpriced beer and just you know sat on my phone <laughs> he kind of came back with a big smile on his face and I was like you know how was it he's like yeah, it was good, it was good. So we we went back to the bar again. I've gone, I'm not gonna stay in and drink. This is overpriced, it's horrible in here, you know what I mean? So we went back, we sat at the bar, and we're there, and like it was it was just quite a chilled experience kind of thing, right? And um th there was again this night, I'm gonna tell you a story I haven't really not really relevant to it, but just to show you how completely lacking I am when a woman hits me. So he's there and he's like, like a bit shuffling and stuff like that. <laughs> and I leaned over to it and I've gone, mate, if you want to go back to the hotel room now, I'll come back in an hour. That should give you an hour to sort yourself out, yeah? He went, oh, cheers, mate. <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> I was like, fine, that's cool. Fine, whatever. I just sat there on my own, you know, enjoying it. <clears throat> and then, briefly off the topic, I got invited to join this other group of people and I was chatting to them. And um, there were a bunch of cops, which now if they say that, I'd be like, no, but back then I didn't really have the same sensibilities I do. And this bird was hitting on me and I had no idea. Like, we were going home the next morning, traveling, we were driving from Scotland down to Pompey, it was a good eight hour drive. She's like, oh, we're up to tomorrow. I've gone, oh, I'm driving home with mates. She goes, well, why don't you go home later? And um, we can spend the day together. And I went, well, no, because I'm going home in the morning. And she was like, <laughs> I just remember this. 
And it's not like, you know, she's like, you know, she put her hand on my hand. And then she was like, my husband's away all day tomorrow. I'm day off. We could, uh, I could show you the sights. And I was like, no, that's really friendly of you. But I need to go home tomorrow morning. <laughs> and then she basically said, do you want to come home with me tonight? <laughs> and I've gone, no, 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 we've got to get up early. <laughs> I didn't realise, like, maybe I was pretty drunk. And maybe I was like, just kind of, I don't know. Like, at no point did I think... This woman wants sex, and I say, sorry, I can't. I've got, you know, I'm in a relationship, or, you know, I've flattered. I was just like, no, it's really inconvenient. I've got a car. <laughs> like, and it wasn't until, like, three in the morning when I lay in bed, and I went, oh. <laughs> so it was, it was kind of like that. So, <clears throat> since then, I'd, um, I've been, there's a strip club called Wiggle, and it's open till, like, five in the morning here in Pompey. And it's kind of like... You have to go through a couple of back roads to get there. <clears throat> and um, it's like one of the, it, it's open till 5 a.m. So it's like one of the last places. And I've been there twice with the same person. And the first time we went there, it was like, um, this is leading up to something. And the first time we went there, you know, we went in and it was 15 quid to get in and then a tenner for a drink. But my friends didn't want to go home. And I was like, okay. So we all sat there. And it was just, like, it was horrible. Like, it's all right venue, you know, women were beautiful, they were walking around and stuff like that. I had no interest in the dance. My mate went off and had one, came back. But it was just that place where people would go who don't want to go home that early. Like, they didn't want to, they weren't particularly interested in dancing because most of the dancers were just, you know, beautiful, athletic, all this underwear, leaning against the wall, can't go and scroll on the phone because there was just no, no one interested in dancing. And it was just, I'm sitting like four in the morning going, why am I here? I live 15 minutes away, I could go home. But my friend and the other people we were out with wanted to stay drinking. Oh, this is grim. <laughs> like, you know, like that is almost the equivalent of when you go into a local pub at you know, 10 o'clock in the morning, it's dead, apart from the people that are, you know, they have to have a shot of whiskey before their pint of beer because the beer doesn't get to the system fast enough to stop the shakes. You know, it was that kind of thing, but four in the morning. And just like, ugh, it was just horrible. I was like, okay, let's go home. But I was drunk. I made myself a good time anyway. But um, we, the next time we went back, I actually had my first lap dance. <laughs> it's just, I just don't get it. I was like, I've not had one, I'm gonna have one. Yeah, if you do this, don't tell your missus. They're not happy, which I get, like 100% get. But I got home drunk and I was like, yeah, I went there and I had a lap dance and she went, you what? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right then, I walked off and I was like, what? Three hours later, oh, right, yeah, I get it. So. Again, it was that kind of sleazy. It was a bit earlier in the evening, it was a bit busier. Drinks were a bit cheaper and, you know, unfortunately I walked in and because I've worked security for a couple of years now, I knew the guards on the door. I was like, oh, okay, here we go again. And this woman came and she was Slovakian, I think, or something like that. Gorgeous. And she was like, okay, uh, follow me. And I went, okay, and I was like, kind of really like, I felt dirty. Like, I was doing this because it's something I hadn't done before. And also, my mate said he'd pay for me. So, let's go. And, you know, apparently it was 20 quid a dance. No, it was 40. And um, it was just, just the experience. Now, uh, you know, we got taken down. It was like, they had like, it looked like changing rooms. You know, like these little booths. A bit fancy with changing rooms. And she goes, sit down. Okay. She goes, sit on your hands. And I went, yeah, okay. <clears throat> And then they played this song by Portishead. I love Portishead, they're incredible. And you know, you will know the song is like, Just wanna feel your love, babe. <laughs> like, wanna feel a woman. And it is the sexiest fucking song I know. And they started playing that and I've immediately gone, well, tone set, right? Uh oh. And then, you know, she started doing her dancing and like, very, oh God, I hope my wife doesn't see this video. Like, you know, very up close and, you know, 
like rubbing on. It's like, like three minutes, like the song, however long the song, it was a short version of it, you know, and grinding her butt against me. And it's like, <clears throat> okay, getting uncomfortable. But it's not like you're in a situation where, you know, if men will know this, when you get a bit of a boner and it's an awkward place, you kind of, you know, you do the. <laughs> this is going to lose me so many subscribers. You do the. What you do the. What do you call it? Like in and up. So you're just kind of like pushing it up under your belt. So it doesn't go like that, it's like that. So the, <laughs> you know, like when you're moving your balls things. But you've got this woman dancing. You can't do that in a in a club because it looks like you're going, oh. <laughs> so I was like, okay, this is awkward. And then, you know, she's crawling all over you. And like, and you're there, like her nipples just scraggling on your nose. You're like, no. Obviously you can't do that because you do that, bang! And it's all, you know, you're just very sexually heated. And it's like, you know, I'm sweating because I'm turned on as fuck. And I've got like this constant nipple rubbing against my nose. And she's back. And then, you know, she goes on to all fours. And you're like, oh. And she spreads. And you're like, oh. <laughs> and you just kind of like, oh. ah. <laughs> All these emotions going. And the song finishes. And she whispers in my ear, and she goes, 60 pounds for another two minutes. And I whispered back, I've got no money. <laughs> so, so she immediately dressed, walked out, and you're left there, just sat there, horny, sweating, awkward, <laughs> in a chair. And you can't stay there for too long, because people think you're going to wank. <laughs> so it's kind of like an immediate, like, I feel disgusting. But highly aroused, she like you know, this amazing thing, Girl, gorgeous bird, and it's like you know she's paying all this attention to you like that, and then because the money transaction's finished, she's got no interest in you. So your emotions are, oh, oh okay, <laughs> so you straight to the toilet, you know, for piss, sort yourself out a little bit, not for a wank because they're going to keep an eye out for that, and then you go back out, and I've turned to my mate and I've gone. Oh yeah, I had to pay her. Can you give me money? And he went, no. <laughs> the only reason I did it. And I was sat there and I've gone, I just spent £40 to be sexually teased in a place I can't do anything about it afterwards. It was horrific. <laughs> like, just, you know, having the, the attention of this woman's fantastic. But then, like, you know, you, you're not taking into account the emotional and biological thing because you can't follow up with anything <laughs> it's just like, I'm like after that it wasn't a it wasn't like a feeling of yeah that was great it was a feeling of that was a waste of fucking money and 10 pound beers <laughs> it's just strip clubs are fucking horrible <laughs> right I am going to say down in the comments by the time I've released this <laughs> it's a video I've been planning two years ago, because this is when this happened. And I thought it was really funny. Now, <clears throat> YouTube won't allow it. So I'm gonna have it unlisted, but linked in the top comment below. <laughs> Please don't share it. But it's gonna be, it's the <laughs> receiving a lap dance roleplay. <laughs> it's only about three minutes long, and I'm actually gonna have to edit this one, but you, <laughs> I'm gonna show you exactly how I was when I was getting this lap dance. Thanks very much. And if you haven't unsubscribed, fantastic. Sick round.